Hello everyone, welcome to the 60 Literary and Jury Charge. We're going to start off with a simple letter to kind of get our fingers going. Here we go, ready? Dear Sir, have you ever wanted to learn to fly? Have you pictured yourself sitting in the cockpit of a plane? Would you like to have a pilot's license? A license to fly will make it possible for you to do scores of things that were never possible before. Our flight training makes it easy to learn to fly. Our centers offer you both flight and ground school training and our course is designed so that what you learn on the ground fully trains you for your solo flight. You will feel as though you are up in the air and flying while you are learning in our ground trainer. Call us today and enjoy the freedom of flight. Sincerely yours soaring in the sky. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to read to you some straight matter, and this is on crimes against persons and crimes against habitation. All right, here we go. I'll read this at 60. Ready? The federal code also covers exclusion of jurors on the basis of race or color, discrimination against a person wearing the uniform of the armed forces, protection of a wide range of activities from election rights to public school enrollment to interstate businesses during a riot, deprivation of relief benefits, damage to religious property, or obstruction of the free exercise of religious beliefs and obstruction of access to reproductive health services. Penalties are primary fines but also include up to life imprisonment and sentence of death for serious violations and inclusion of kidnapping, sexual abuse, or killing in the crime. And then it goes on to sexual battery. Reform. Rape, a type of 
aggravated battery is so universally abhorrent that it has held its place as a separate and more serious crime unlawful sexual intercourse against the victim's will by force or threat of immediate force could be punished by death until Coker versus Georgia declared the death penalty for rape unconstitutional. The intimate nature that makes this offense so serious makes it difficult to discuss and evaluate. Rigid perceptions of gender roles also have hindered a willingness to be more open in discussing sex crimes. Recently, however, reforms in social attitudes have reached the law, expanding protection against a greater variety of offenses and placing greater emphasis on harm to the victim. New statutes increasingly reflect the following changes. Victim testimony. Sexual offense trials often pit the world of the victim against the world of the defendant. Traditionally, the victim's credibility had to be bolstered by evidence of her previous chastity and cooperation of the witness. Her believability dwindled further with any delay in reporting the crime. Now, rape shield laws prevent evidence of the victim's prior sexual activity from being introduced in court. Unless it is relevant to consent, children can testify in some courts via videotape or with the aid of anatomically correct dolls to make the experience less traumatic. Statutes of limitations restricting the time period in which prosecution must be started have been eliminated for sexual offenses against children in 11 states and eliminated without regard to age for the most serious sexual offenses in an additional six states. Many other states have extended time limits. Cooperation may be circumstantial. These changes are not without problems. A defendant's Sixth Amendment right to confront the accuser may be diminished by videotaped 
testimony, expert opinion that rape trauma syndrome may cause the victim to repress the evidence, making difficult the identification of the offender and re reporting of the crime is not admissible in some courts as a still questionable and prejudicial theory. Such changes may interfere with the defendant's right to a speedy trial as well as the timely gathering of evidence. Okay, so there's more, but I'm going to stop there. We'll leave that for um, another class. All right, I know that was probably difficult, but we need to hear all types of material, so I'm going to move right into Closing arguments by the plaintiff. Okay, here we go. Ready? I am concerned about the points raised by Mr. Gilmore. First, a robbery is a robbery, whether taken or whether property is taken from the person or the immediate presence of the victim. Immediate presence does not require that the property be taken within the actual presence of the victim. A property can be taken within the same house from one room to another as soon as one act which is endemic to the robbery takes place in the presence of the victim then the property is deemed to have been taken within their immediate presence. Secondly, Mr. Gilmore says that there is no sequence of events. I disagree strongly with that. I think that we certainly did present a strong suspicion as to what the sequence of events was. At the hearing, we had Mr. Stanley saying that Brian left his house and therefore must have arrived at his own house somewhere between 3 and 3.10 in the afternoon. If you recall, he said that Brian left his house saying that he was going home. The boys live right across the street from each other. So if that is to be believed, Brian got home between three and 310. The car was seen 
parked behind the Duncan house at 3.15 to 3.30. And it appears that Tom Wilson saw the car at approximately 3.15. Thus, if we adopt this sequence of events, Brian was already in the house when Snyder got into that house intent on robbery. Thus, it would be hard to believe that Snyder, in fact, took all of the property out of the house and then in some way confronted Brian Duncan. Why would he? He would have left the house and there would have been no need for a confrontation. Over and above that, entry was via the master bedroom window. All right. All right, we've got time for this article that I have here on rattlesnake venom and protection against your animals from rattlesnake bites. So this is called, what do you mean I'm not protected against rattlesnakes? So obviously your word list, you're going to hear a rattlesnake, a red rock rattlesnake, vaccine, um, venomous snakes, infectious, infections, veterinarian okay all right so i'll read this at 60 ready rattlesnake bite is a veterinary emergency it results in serious injury or even death to thousands of dogs each year rattlesnake Venom is a complex mixture of toxins that spreads through a dog's body following the bite. Red Rock Rattlesnake Vaccine was developed to help defend dogs from the dangerous effects of rattlesnake venom. That's rattlesnake protection that will put you and your dog at ease. Rattlesnakes live in a variety of habitats. They are found in wetlands, deserts, and forests from sea level to mountain elevations. Rattlesnakes are most active in warmer seasons from spring to autumn. In southern latitudes, they are occasionally found year round. Dogs are at risk for rattlesnake bites. They can encounter a rattlesnake anytime they are in rattlesnake habitats. 
you and your dog may live near rattlesnakes. You may travel through or frequently visit places where rattlesnakes are found. Perhaps they live where you take your dog hiking, camping, hunting, or even on a walk. Like people, dogs may stumble upon a snake by accident. Curiosity or a protective instinct can place your dog at risk. Red rock rattlesnake vaccine helps to protect him or her. Damage caused by rattlesnake bite can be serious. When injected into an unprotected dog, the toxins in snake venom are very painful and can have serious consequences. Even if your dog survives the immediate effects of a rattlesnake bite, he can be permanently injured by the venom. Treatment of rattlesnake bites is expensive. It may include anti-venom injections that can cost hundreds to thousands of dollars. Use of anti-venom is associated with an increased risk of adverse effects which can complicate a dog's recovery. Other costs of snake bite treatment may include hospitalization, intravenous fluids, other medicines, and even surgery. Vaccination can reduce the impact of snake bite or eliminate the need for anti-venom and decrease other treatment costs. Vaccines work by stimulating an animal's immunity to defend against harmful agents. The rattlesnake venom or vaccine is intended to help create an immunity that will protect your dog. Even after your dog is vaccinated, she should be taken to a veterinarian for evaluation and care as soon as possible following a snake bite. This can determine whether your dog needs more treatment, even bites by non-venomous snakes can lead to serious infections and antibiotic treatment may be needed. So a veterinarian is the best person to consult regarding medical decisions for your dog.
Okay, I know I went way over, but I wanted to finish this article. So that is the end of our 60 Literary and Jury Charge. Have a great day.